Welcome to the Remodeling Reimagined podcast, the podcast that gives you an inside look at the remodeling industry from award-winning designers. On this week's pod, Cindy Cipriani sat down with Dave Parker from AdvantaClean to discuss how homeowners can improve the air quality in their homes. Without further ado, here is your host, Cindy Cipriani. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another podcast of Remodeling Reimagined. Today, we're gonna to be talking about something that you may not have considered before, but is really important, and that is the air quality of your home. And we are here joined with our guest, Dave Parker from Advanta Clean. Hi, Dave. Hey, Cindy, how are you? I'm great, thanks so much for being on. Dave is an me. expert, oh, you're welcome. Dave is an expert in the field of air quality, and we can't wait to hear some of his insights. You know, it's so important today that homeowners realize that the how to improve the air quality in their home and also, you know, some flags to look for to see if uh, you really should get this checked out. Air pollution is really a significant and pervasive impact on health. In fact, the World Health Organization lists it as the world's largest single environmental health risk. Did you know that more than two times the amount of people die from air quality issues every year than car accidents? That's kind of crazy. I had never heard of that. Um, so especially these days when everyone is kind of locked inside a lot because of COVID and also we're working at home, we're schooling at home, and it's winter time here in the Northeast. And so we're not opening doors and windows the way we normally would. And so we thought we would address air quality because it's so important. So let's kick this off. And Dave, maybe you could discuss a little bit about what creates poor air quality in your home. Uh, thanks again for having me, Cindy. And as far as poor, quali poor air quality in your home, there are a number of different factors um, which can influence it. Um, one of the things that uh, we see a lot at Advantage Clean is when there are some type of issues with moisture uh, inside a home. And the causes of that can really vary greatly uh, from one situation to the next. But the bottom line is that moisture can get excessive in your home or can get a little bit too high, really in, in one of two forms. Uh, it can come in the form of high levels of relative humidity. And these are more commonly seen in areas such as basements, sometimes attics or crawl spaces. Uh, and another more direct and obvious form uh, would be some type of a, a water intrusion leak. Uh, improperly, uh, in, improperly installed windows, doors uh, will leak sometimes and allow moisture inside the home. Uh, sometimes there'll just be an issue with plumbing and plumbing and maybe it's easily detectable something under your sink that you notice right away uh, maybe it's something that's not so easily detectable something in the way that the uh, bathroom a new bathroom remodel was installed if it's not done uh, properly by qualified technicians and qualified people um, we see small leaks which turn into big problems and the, the biggest problem and when it comes to your air quality and associated back with moisture is if Mold develops. Now, mold is a, a four-letter word that everyone is, well, not everyone, but a lot of people are scared of. Um, so the one thing I want to uh, take, take a moment on, take a moment and focus on rather, is the fact that uh, mold is, is in everyone's home. And the fact that it's inside someone's home is not necessarily by itself an issue. There's mold outside, there's mold inside at all times. It's when mold has the opportunity to grow. It has the sources inside a home to grow that it can become a problem for folks. So how would, problems, a, how would a homeowner know when to call you as a professional if everyone has it in their home? Like what would be some of the things that they would look for to say, hey, I, I may have a problem? Good question, really good question. Um, and I think what you wanna look at is if you're having any type of a moisture issue. If you know that, if you, if you suspect that you have a leak inside your home somewhere, perhaps you're downstairs in your family room, uh, you're underneath some plumbing upstairs and you see that there's a little spot on the ceiling. And that spot, you know, you went up there and cleaned it a couple times, but it keeps coming back, keeps coming back. Uh, that's an indication that there's some type of water leak in there. Uh, another big indication is what I always tell people is to use your senses. When you go into your basement, do you notice a musty smell? 
Um, do you, do you, when you go down there for a little bit, do you notice any allergic-like symptoms? Do your eyes itch a little bit? Or maybe one person in your family is impacted. They go in, every time they go in the basement, the kids go down to the basement and play for a while. They come up, they, got runny, they have runny noses. Uh, things like allergic-like symptoms, they're, they're basically what's happening there is if there is mold growth in a home, the particulates will get up in the air and cause those allergic-type reactions. Yeah, and that's really important to look at. Sometimes people blame it on the dog or the cat. <laughs> they don't and realize that, be, that it's their air quality. <laughs> yeah, and, and that can be part of it as well. Uh, certainly pet dander uh, and you know different types of things that comes from pets um, can certainly impact folks. But generally, that's something that y you may have known in advance. You, you, you generally have a good feel for whether or not you have, uh, you know, if the kids are allergic to, to pets or something like that because you've experienced it sometimes in the past. You've experienced, you know, when you went to a friend's house and they have a cat and all of a sudden, you know, you have the sneezes. The difference in what you're looking for as a homeowner or as a, as a business owner is, is, are, is someone or am I having issues inside the home and nowhere else? Um, oftentimes, we'll be called out to, to take a look at a property and talk with folks. And that's something that we commonly tell them. Is what happens? When, is anybody, does anybody go in this particular area and experience any type of allergic responses? They'll say yes, um, but I'm not sure. Is it, is it, it's, it's October right now. Is this just seasonal allergies or it's April or May or whatever the case may be? The next question that I always ask them is, think hard about it. And if, you, if you're not sure of the answer, kind of monitor things over the next week or two is it worse when you're in this space versus when you're out of the space? Now, we're all in our spaces all the time right now, so that might be hard to judge. But just, you know, if I go in the basement, do I have a runny nose? If I come upstairs, go outside, go to a friend's house or something like that, does it go away? Right, and some of these issues, uh, people think, well, these things just happen in older homes or, you know, basements that weren't, can, you know, were really old yeah. and, and had some kind of problems. But, you know, I know you see these things even in new construction. And with remodeling, you know, we're adding additions to people's homes. Uh, a lot of people want to remodel their basements. And so it's really a concern about how this construction is going to take place and that it's done properly with the proper amount of ventilation and drainage. Um, all of these things come into play. So maybe you could comment about construction and you know the proper way of, of doing that, what things that people need to consider when they're you know thinking about doing a remodel yeah. or buying a home. Yeah, and it, you, you touched on something that's really important. Um, it is a very common belief that you know older homes are going to you know be subject to a little bit more mold. Um, on the contrary, in my experience, I actually see the opposite effect. It's the newer homes, generally because they're a little bit more tightly sealed. So if and when there is some type of an issue, it has a better opportunity to expand. Um, we do work in Philadelphia, and a lot of the older homes there, uh, people will say, hey, can you go check up in my attic? We expect to have a lot of issues. We go up there, and it's really not too bad. It's just dusty because the insulation or, or something in there allows for a ton of airflow because it's such an old place. Now, to kind of uh, expand on your point a little bit, it's really important. Um, I touched on it a little bit earlier when I mentioned the, the remodel of the bathroom, but home construction uh, and the way that it's done is such a critical factor. Um, and I really can't overemphasize it because uh, it, the way things are put together, um, in, in especially in a tight environment, if the plumbing is not done properly mainly, if the insulation is not installed properly, if the ventilation is not installed properly, all these are opportunities to allow moisture to get into spaces that we don't want. A plumbing issue, if, if a joint is not properly put together uh, or if it's not sealed uh, where the exit is, it can create a slow drip, which is almost the worst thing because it's not obvious, e easily noticeable. A slow drip in a bathroom can work its way underneath tile and just expand as, as uh, and just kind of like, a, like water touching the corner of a sponge. You know that, that entire sponge will be fully um, saturated in due time. A slow drip every time someone takes a shower that gets into the subfloor and expands from there can damage the subfloor, can get to the edges, can damage uh, the wood framing around, can damage sinks. Before you know it, you, if a, a slightly lower quality in uh, workmanship in a bathroom 
can require that the entire bathroom is gutted, re needs to be gutted to get the mold out six or 12 months later after install. Yeah, this reminds me of this weekend I was watching a show on Netflix and um, it, it's with uh, Jane Fonda and uh, she had this home and, and she had this little little stain on the ceiling in her kitchen mm -hmm. and a couple people pointed it out to her and she was like, oh, you know, it's it probably just like something splashed up there. She wasn't really paying attention. Well, pretty soon there was a drip. So they had a bucket on the island and, and she kept emptying the bucket and calling the plumber to try and get out there. And then finally one day, you know, another person filled up the tub upstairs and the whole tub fell through mm. <laughs> into the kitchen on the island. And of course, this is a comedy and it was, you know, it was funny, but in real life, um, little things that start out small that you can't see can turn into humongous problems, just like um, stucco on the outside yeah. of a house. Many, many homes with, with stucco have small penetrations and it wasn't built properly with the right ventilation behind that stucco and whole fronts of houses have to be removed and uh, remediated because of the mold. Yep. I'm sure you've seen conditions like that. Unfortunately, yeah, uh, all the time. Uh, we really do see it. And uh, the tub going through the floor, I have actually seen that. Um, oh my goodness. Or I've seen situations where that happens very commonly um, in bathrooms where a toilet seal is not properly installed underneath. A slow drip every time someone flushes the toilet. Um, yes. People, people will be sitting in their living room underneath that bathroom and all of a sudden the entire ceiling will just fall to the floor. Oh and my goodness. And guess what's between those two floors? insulation, yes. saturated insulation, wet wood, and usually tons of mold. Yes. Well, we're talking to Dave Parker today from Advanta Clean in Gloucester County. And, you know, he's really giving us some great things to think about to check around your home. And what could homeowners do to improve the air quality? Like if you come out and you find a problem, you know, what are some of the things that your company does? It really depends on, it. when we go out onto a property, it really depends. A lot of the times when folks call us, it will be because they've found some type of moisture issue. Um, sometimes it will be as simple as they just, they, they think they have a problem, but they're not sure. So a lot of times when we come out, um, we ask a series of questions to try to direct us to where a moisture issue might be. And most of the time we can figure out where it is and whether or not it needs some type of reconstruction, remediation, et cetera. Um, other aspects uh, that impact indoor air quality are, you know, what's going on in your ductwork. Um, people don't always think about it, but the ductwork is really what I like to call the lungs of the home. Uh, the air is uh, coming through air. If you have an issue in your basement, for example, uh, and your HVAC system is in the basement, uh, it's going to be drawing on air down, air in the basement. The uh, air duct systems are not airtight. They're generally put together. They're metal. The metal itself is not something where dust and debris will come through. However, they are attached together in a series of pieces and there, there are always opportunities where air and dust throughout the house will get in there. And just over time, uh, the dust in your home, it will work its way through the return. Some of it will get picked up in the filter, but some of it will get in the ductwork. Uh, and that's another area that can make a difference for folks. Clean ductwork, that's the air you're breathing. Yeah, it's really important. I love the way you called it the lungs of your home because it truly is. And really, there's a whole building science now around air quality. And it's really important that people ask their contractors what kind of training they've had in air quality. Because if they haven't gone to you know recent seminars or learned this new building science that's out there, then they're going to be making mistakes. And that mistake can really come at the cost of your health or your family's health. It's that important. So not all contractors are you know, equal in their knowledge of these things. And of course, you know, as a remodeling company, we have trade partners such as yourself, who if we detect something, can come out and take care of it and has that knowledge of the building science and doing it in a manner that even during the cleanup is not going to cause more of a problem by spreading that problem. Yeah, so, you, you, re you touched on something very important there, Cindy, and I, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but- No, it's okay. Uh, w one of the things that, that I know that uh, your team does as well as our team um, is we work with the, with the thought that if there is an issue or the way that we work, we'll produce some particulates in the air. It will uh, stir things up, so to speak. Um, and we use something called negative air pressure. And it, that is a great way to avoid 
uh, what we call cross-contamination, um, potentially bringing an issue from one area to another. And that's often the difference that you see between uh, a qualified contractor, someone who is, uh, as you mentioned, uh, someone who, who, who takes their work very seriously, um, continually, continually goes to trainings and seminars and does research in order to make sure that they're doing the best quality work. Uh, because uh, as most people know, and I think in most businesses, the what's considered best, best practice is not a constant over time. Uh, there are certain consistencies over time, but it's also important to consistently train and understand your field because best practice today may improve tomorrow. There may be yes. new best practice. And it's, it's important always improving, really right? Keep, absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. And it's important to stay up on that. Well, thank you so much. Um, again, we're talking with Dave Parker. Dave, maybe you could tell us where folks could reach you at your website or phone number. Certainly. Uh, thanks so much again, Cindy, for having me. I really appreciate the opportunity. Um, we can be reached at www.advanaclean.com. Uh, our, our office is located in Mantua, and we have a shop in West Effort, New Jersey. Uh, we can also be reached 24 hours a day, seven days a week at 856-295-9100. Well, everyone, I hope this podcast has helped you breathe a little bit easier and got some of your questions answered and really start thinking about this winter, looking around your home, making sure that you don't see any signs of leaks, um, smells that you may smell that you've been putting off. All of these things really should be addressed. And also if you're considering doing any type of remodel, that's the time to address these also with a qualified trade partner or, or contractor. So if you have any questions or comments, please let us know here at Cipriani Remodeling Solutions and we will see you next time on Remodeling Reimagined. Once again, thanks for tuning in everyone. And if you're looking to start a remodeling project, you can learn more about our design process at CiprianiRemodelingSolutions.com. And you can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter.